All right, y'all. Thank you so much for joining in on another episode of Designing the Best You. I hope you are all getting ready for school ending and summer coming. I'm like 50-50 on summertime. Like I love the warmth. I love the activities, the sun, shine, not necessarily being hot in the sun. I'm not one to like enjoy sweating, but here in Phoenix, the heat gets a little unbearable come like July and August. Yes. I've had two of my boys. They were born in August. So I've been at the third trimester there, but we'll just ignore that that's done, but finding and planning activities to keep these boys busy, as I'm sure you guys all find too, is exhausting. <laughs> And, but we need to wear them out and give my husband and I time apart from them, them time apart from each other, those type of things, right? And we can only be in the pool with young kids so many hours of each day of the week. I mean, who's with me, right? Oh, and I want to remind you, if you haven't joined our Facebook group for tons of information, live coffee chats with me every Wednesday on various topics. Sometimes we have guests on there too. It's every Wednesday at 8.30 a.m. Pacific Standard Time. I want you to go ahead, head to the show notes and join our Facebook group. There's tons of support and community, which we also desperately need, right? And I'm here to help you thrive. All right. So today's topic isn't so much... I shouldn't say so much, but like directly health related. And it's for a reason. Many of you are moms and you come to me saying, I'm so tired. How in the world can I do things like meal prep? How in the world can I get healthy groceries? How can I get rest? Wear my kids out at the same time, have time with my husband, move my body, do self-care, help with homework, basically do all the things and not add to my chronic illness because we know the stress creates inflammation and other issues. And yeah, we don't want that. Right. And then they look at me and they're like, how do you do it all? You're like super mom. First of all, stop right there. I don't even want to paint the picture. And I'm sorry if I even have anywhere on social media online, even in my community, I am not super mom and none of you should be either. Okay. Yes, it takes a lot of planning, a lot of grace, heck, a lot of grace, and working together with my husband and my community, okay? Last year, I was on um, Deanna's, Deanna Lugoli's podcast, and we were actually talking about not being super mom. She was, she didn't, she's, she's in um, Europe, and she's like, how do you do it all? Oh my goodness, I have kids too, and how do you do it? And I'm like, stop, like, I want to tell you mom something. Yes, we do a lot for our families. We don't get paid enough, right? But I want to tell you something. It's not a badge to wear. Ouch, that hurt. Just even for me to say. I know firsthand that we want to be known for being good moms. I want to say you are a good mom. You are enough. You're enough for your kids. You were handpicked to be their mom. No one else. Okay. You are enough for your spouse. God handpicked them for you, even though it can be rough times at times, right? And then it does take a village to raise a family. So why have you been isolating yourself and thinking that you can do it all on your own? wearing that badge. And again, I am speaking directly to myself. I have to remind myself of this weekly, if not daily sometimes. Okay. This past month has actually been really a challenge for our family. My husband was out of town for the entire month and I was playing single working mom of three boys. Well, at first I wore it as a badge. I'm like, yep, I got this right. Like, just like the busy badge that many of us wear when we're in the corporate world, like, oh, I'm busy. Oh, I got this. Right. Oh, I'm busy. I must be needed. And I want people to know that I'm needed. And I'm going to tell you something here. I was brought to my knees in tears saying, no, Vanessa, you can't and you shouldn't do it all. Your health, both both physically and mentally, are incredibly important, even more so with a chronic illness and a set of autoimmune diseases, right? As we know, stress is a massive contributor to our health problems. Whether you have a defined and diagnosed autoimmune condition or chronic illness or not, or you just have the symptoms of, 
we tend to add unnecessary stress to our lives. And again, I'm speaking to myself here, right? I did it this past month and prior years because I wanted to silently behind the scenes yet out in public at the same time be known for doing it all. For being a mom of three boys under the age of six, for having multiple businesses and those, quote, thriving all the time, for having a, a great marriage, or so I thought, perhaps displayed it as that, for having amazing connections in the community, at church, in the business world, for living that, quote, healthy lifestyle, for having three autoimmune conditions and still looking good physically, yet being worn down and being injured as results. Yes, even I wore my autoimmune conditions as a badge worthy of being praised. Not good. Okay. So I finally said, stop, like stop the stress of it all. Use the gifts and talents that you've been given to get your crap organized. Like God gave you the gift of organization, Vanessa, right? So that you can help your family, your kids and others and make it simple. Too many times us as moms, we, we look at all of this social media stuff, right? Pinterest is a big example of it. Oh, I want to be this mom who does all these fancy things. And oh, look at my home and look at my bubble, like all this stuff, right? We, we, we tend to even, even though lately, probably over the past year or so on social media, you know, it's been saying, oh yeah, don't put all like the perfect stuff on there. Really complain about like what's going on and tell people the story. But then we want the pity party at the same time for our sad story. Okay. So we, we tend to make things quote simple, but then overcomplicate it and display it like that at the same time. Not good again. Okay. And again, I'm speaking to myself. Okay. Many of us have so many things going on in this community physically, right? And we have it going on in our minds too. We're like, oh, you're just diagnosed with this and oh, oh they have these symptoms and oh, I'm tired. Blah, 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 right. But we don't need something more complex in our lives to make our lives better. So how do we as moms and wives and women in the workplace with chronic illnesses and autoimmune conditions, again, maybe you haven't been diagnosed, but are experiencing symptoms. How do we organize our daily lives so that we don't drain ourselves of energy? Our goal is to live a vibrant life, right? To showcase our gifts and talents to the world. No one else is not Betty's, Susie's, whoever. Our gifts and talents to the world, not live in constant pain and exhaustion and depression and anxiety. We were not created to be that way. We've done that to ourselves. And I say all those things because I've been all of those and they still creep into my life if I'm not careful and aware. Okay. And I know all of you, and I'm not saying this to put any of you down or make you feel bad about yourself. I'm saying this again to myself and to bring out the reality. My job here is to empower you and to educate you and to help you move forward to live that vibrant life. Okay. And part of that is opening up my life to you and giving you some tips and tricks as to how to perhaps make your life, even if you take just one little tiny thing that I tell you from today or from being in our community that helps you improve a part of your life, that makes me smile. Okay. And I know it makes God smile too. Okay. So I want to give you a few tips and tricks that have worked in our home in regards to organizing. And I say that word lightly for all of you out there who fear it and freak it because you're like, I've never been organized. It's really tough for me. I've always been just a scatterbrain. Okay. But when we have a plan, when we have expectations, even if it's a vacation day, even if, even if it's vacation week, if it's a spa day, whatever, we're able to feel better because we know what's coming. Right. Even when we go to a job, we know we have to be there at a certain time. We leave at a certain time. We have breaks at a certain time, right? When kids are in school, they know they have recess at specific times. They have all these things. So if we have some kind of expectations, then it allows us to, to relieve the stress because we're not trying to be like all over the place, okay? But it doesn't have to be perfect. Every minute doesn't have to be planned, okay? So there's that excited stress of the vacation or the spa day. I don't know. To me, it's like exciting, but it's stressful for me at the same time. Okay. But some of you, it's like, oh my gosh, I love that stuff. Right. But then there's the nervous and negative stress of, oh my God, we're out of groceries and I have no idea what to buy. Oh, the kids are out of school next week. And what am I going to do with them all day? Whether you have to work or not, or, oh my goodness, my doctor, he just 
said, I have to remove certain foods from my diets and I don't know where to start. So the first tip I want to give you in regards to planning your days is with your kids. Okay. Kids need structure. Okay. And we need some structure too. So they need structure because they have no idea. They don't know what life is about. We have to teach them. So whether they're young or they're older, we don't want to be super rigid. Okay. But we want to have blocks of time that are regulated. So in our family, for example, our kids come out of their rooms. They're allowed to come out at 6 30 in the morning. Okay. They come out a couple of times before then, but that is the time they're allowed to be like completely out. We say, we make our beds, we brush our teeth, we get our vitamins, and then we go for a little walk. They know that it's the same thing every day. Okay. We don't say, Hey, you have to make your bed in five minutes and you have to brush your teeth in two minutes. And you get right. But that's the thing. Then we come back from the walk. We eat breakfast, whatever's on the menu for the day. I literally have a whiteboard and says, here's what breakfast and dinner are. Anything else is kind of free for all. Okay. We eat breakfast and then we play until school time. Now that school's out, we play for an hour or so outside. Okay. I don't care if it's hot outside. I don't care if it's rainy outside. I don't care if it's cold, get them outside, but definitely have some ideas for them. We all remember being right bored after school, let out like, oh, there's nothing to do. Oh my goodness. Yet we're so excited to get out of school, right? So tell them, hey, we have some chalk. We have bikes to ride. We have a water table with scoops and, you know, scoops and tubes. We have balls to throw in Amazon boxes, whatever, right? Give, take tin foil and ball it up and say, here, we can throw it around, right? This gives them some options, okay? We have a lot more creativity as adults than our kids do. So we need to give them options. We can't expect, you know, a five or even a 10 year old or 15 year old to be like, Hey, go do just here. You have like two hours, go figure something out. Okay. Yes. They will complain some days. Hey, we do too, but it's our job to start them off. Okay. Draw hopscotch squares on um, driveway with chalk. Ask them to draw a picture of a beach on the driveway with chalk. Um, cut out some shapes the night before so you can build a house, you know, out of construction paper and they can glue it together. Do a car wash in their water table, which is one of the best ways to get their toys clean, by the way. Just give them a little bucket of soap, give them some brushes and their water table, boom, clean toys, right? Might be a little bit more of a mess, but still, okay? Allows them to be creative, have fun, and somewhat clean some toys in the meantime, all right? Then what we do in our house to give me a break, <laughs> we come inside, we do like 15 to 30 minutes of a Christian episode. Um, there's this app called Right Now Media, and it has all these good valued 20 to 30 minute shows teaching kids great lesson, lessons about sharing and fighting and being kind and nice and all those type of things. I'll put the link to that in the show notes so you guys can sign up for it however you like. I always set a timer because you know what? The days that I haven't, I lose track of time. They end up getting the, the eyes in front of the screen, the, you know, glazed over look, and they end up being crabby the rest of the day, to be honest with you. We all need that break from the screen. So set the timer for, you know, I put on the, the microwave and say 15, 30 minutes, whatever, right? It's good for me and them. Okay. Now I suggest during this time, don't sit there and scroll social media. Okay. You can either work pay some bills, take a shower, paint your nails, but you have to have a plan. Okay. I'm not saying again, every minute needs to be planned, but say, Hey, during this time, I'm going to pay my bills, or I'm going to write this email, or I'm going to whatever it is, or even take a mini nap, just shut your eyes for a moment. Okay. Then my favorite part of the day, right. Then plan however you want for lunch and other things, activities, take them to a park, whatever. Um, which by the way, a park is the best way to get the kids energy out. So you can even bring a book to read, get some things done there too, right? My favorite part of the day, quiet time. So after lunch, we have, we put them in there about one o'clock and they come out about two 30. The youngest one still takes a nap. The oldest two, the oldest one definitely doesn't, but our middle one sometimes does. But what we do is we say, okay, you have to be quiet. You can't be in there going crazy. You can't have electronics in there. You can't have anything that makes noise. You can, the oldest one we allow to color, something quiet. If you want to take a nap, that would be wonderful. If not, play, talk to yourself. I don't care, right? But you got to stay in there. We all have to have our separate time. And again, have a plan for yourself. If you have a business and you need to make calls during that time, you do it, or a job. Or if you just want to, again, do some of those other things from the morning, 
eat your lunch in peace and quiet, right? Do that. If you have another thing that I used to do, and I actually want to get back into it is take little boxes of random toys that you already have or trade with a neighbor. We do that a lot too. We trade toys with neighbors. It's like brand new toys, put them in boxes, hide them away. You can put like colors on them, names on them, whatever. And you can say, Hey, today during quiet time, what color box do you want to play with? And they get to pick the box. They take it out, they play with it, and then you put it up and away. So it's not something that can do all the time. Right. And then it keeps it organized and there you go. Great. There you go. Again, if you have younger kids, don't give them things they can color with. I've made that mistake a few times. Um, but by the way, like those magic erasers are wonderful for cleaning that stuff up off of walls. If any of you actually have, um, a way to get crayons and markers off the wall, like textured walls. Cause here in Arizona, we have some textured walls. I don't know why they do that out here and it gets in all the cracks and crevices. Let me know. Cause those magic erasers don't work and I haven't found anything yet. So let me know. So after quiet time for us, we again, do another round of like 30 minutes of TV. Sometimes it goes a little bit longer, depending on if we have calls or my husband and I are finishing up work or something like that. But again, it gives me time to either sit with them or prep for dinner or have these calls or something like that. Okay. Here's another big one. Have a plan for dinner and bedtimes. I think all of us parents, we can agree that bedtime stinks. It's like someone gave our kids an IV of like 10 energy drinks within the 30 minutes before bedtime. But I have found, and I've made these mistakes, and I'm sure all of you guys have too, that if I have a plan, like letting them read for a few minutes by themselves, you know, maybe even diffusing some lavender or something in their room, calm them down. Then we do a couple minutes of like meditation or deep breathing. Sometimes they do it, sometimes they don't, but it, it just helps. And then we can read a book or two together. It really does help them calm down a bit. And the bedtime situation ends up being better, really perfect, but better. And it doesn't stress any of us out because we know what to expect. Okay. So that's tip one is kind of having those expectations throughout the day. Consistency is the key though. You can't just do it one day or two days and that's it. The second tip revolves around food. I don't know about you guys, but my boys, they just nonstop eat. And it's been especially annoying this past year. I think they eat more than they ever have, (laughs) but the key again is to have a plan. Now we have snacks at 9am and 3pm and they're small snacks, usually a fruit or vegetable and a set of crackers or cereal. That's it. I've done two things lately. The most recent one, I signed up for a meal delivery service. Never done it before. I was like, oh, I can't find one that works, blah, blah, blah. But I did this one. It's called Gobble. And I think it was like $35 for three or four dinners. All the ingredients, meats, marinated, instructions, less than 15 minutes, boom. Super easy. And bonus, it's easy enough that the kids can help. Biggest piece of advice. I know it's annoying. I know it takes longer, but include your kids in cooking. Yes, it takes longer, but here's the thing is it teaches them a basic skill, keeps them occupied and they get to reap the rewards of their own efforts. They like sprinkling things in. They like mixing things. They spill things. Yes. Laugh about it. Give yourself grace. Give them grace. Okay. The other thing that I've done more regularly is have the kids pick out a set of meals they want each week, either by looking at my Pinterest boards or recipe book. First of all, it gives them a visual. It reminds them because they can't, I mean, they can read, but they can't read everything yet. Right. And most of the things like in my Pinterest and my um, Pinterest boards and in my recipe book, we've already made them. So that's a win, right? It's, it's not me recreating the wheel or finding something new. And they're like, what is that? Right. Then together we create a grocery list. We first check to see what we are there in the house. I typically do that. And then we write down what we need. When we go to the store, Now I only try to bring one of my three kids at a time. This past month has been three at a time and it's been challenging. I have that child help by putting the food items in the cart. I don't give them an iPad. I don't give them a phone. They are involved in the whole process. Okay. Can be a little bit stressful at times, but again, they know what to expect. They know when we get out of the car, we go and find one of them finds a cart. We give them a job, right? The next person, you know, if we're bringing multiple of them, then Hey, what's next on the list? Okay, look, we need bananas. Go grab them, put them in the cart, right? Nicely, right? Those type of things. It's all of their jobs then, you know, to put the bags in the cart from the conveyor belt after they have unloaded it at the checkout. And then it's all of their jobs to put the groceries away when you get home. Two things here. They get stickers on their chart, which they end up getting money for a reward or whatever it is, right? And I get to sit down at a time and chill for a moment because with autoimmune conditions, chronic illnesses, Shopping wears me out. 
And it's usually a two hour process a couple times a month. Okay. Now I don't do any meal prepping, any cooking the day I go grocery shopping. Cause again, it wears me out. The key here though, is to make sure before you do any of that, that you have a meal prepped that's already ready at home leftovers, or we order out. Most of the time it's, we order out and it's always a restaurant that I'm able to eat at. Um, and it's super quick and everyone likes, okay. Lifesaver in regards to organizing life with a set of chronic illnesses. Again, your job is not to be super mom. It's to save your energy for the things that matter. Okay. They're all going to eat something at some point, right? I tend to meal prep things that take longer to cook during the weekdays on the weekend, like spaghetti sauce, soups, poultry, casseroles. And then I double or triple the batches and then freeze half of that. So I usually do all that on Sunday after church a couple times a month. And then my husband takes the kids out for a few hours so I can get that stuff done and get it done quickly. Sometimes I have to do it with them there and they help out and it takes a little longer, but it is what it is. Okay. I highly recommend though, if you can use a spouse or a neighbor or friend to help out by removing the kids, especially the younger ones during that time, do it. Okay. Babysitter, whoever, and keep the meals basic. I used to try and be so fancy and be like, oh, we're going to try this recipe. And this looks great. You know, blah, blah, blah. This one, you know, someone posted on social media. It was great. Blah, blah, blah. Seriously. Like spaghetti, do spaghetti, right? Do a basic casserole, do meatloaf, right? Do, you know, obviously you can't really prep salads, but you can cook the meats, do a soup, right? Those things last, they're filling, they're quick. You can throw things in a crock pot, those things. Okay. Third tip. Okay. And wait, before I even go to that, if you want to do try, if you do want to try a new recipe, like I only do maybe one recipe a month or every other month, a new one. Okay. Again, it wears me out and it allows me to plan for it and get excited for it. Okay. Third tip, set yourself up for amazing sleep. Easier said than done, right? <laughs> I struggled with sleeping well for many years because of changing hormones. Again, I wanted to do all the things. My Addison's disease changing around, Hashimoto flare-ups, living in the freaking hot desert. <laughs> Funny, right? But I started planning out a bedtime routine and relaxation around it. I didn't need to do all the things at night when the kids went to sleep, right? Just basically clean up the kitchen and that was it, okay? For example, I have darkening curtains in my bedroom. I'm a morning person, but I don't need it shining in my eyes at 5 a.m., especially in the summertime here when the time is just crazy for the sun coming up. Plus, if I wake up in the middle of the night, I'm not distracted by the light in the room. Second, I make sure I have a noise machine and that my bed is cool. I actually tried out a multiple difference, fancy, expensive um, bed cooling systems. And I found recently, um, what, a month ago, one on Amazon for 150 bucks. And it is amazing. I'll put it in the show notes. So in case you um, want to use it, it's amazing. It's simple. It's, it actually makes me freeze to be honest with you, but it's good. Um, so I don't feel like I'm going through menopause and sweating all night. Right. I also diffuse essential oils to calm my system. And I don't use any screens before bedtime, an hour before bedtime. Okay. I'm serious about this. It's so important for our eyes to rest. Okay. Cause if they don't rest, we're up all night. I know we want that quiet time to be like scrolling through and reading some things and whatever, watching shows. But here's the thing. We do all that. We stay up late and then we complain about how tired we are in the next day. And we're not involved in our kids' lives and we're not involved in the community. And we're, our husbands are like, you're so tired and blah, blah, blah. You have a choice. Sleep is the most important part of your health outside your diet. It's the only time your organs and other parts of the body have the chance to rest and heal. Okay. If you're going all the time, go, go, go. Trust me. I've been there. That's my personality. I always want to go, 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 go. Here's the thing. Your body's not going to heal and your body reaps those terrible actions. Okay. You have one body, take care of it. And on that note, please stop trying to do it all. Okay. You're never going to be able to do it all. Well, the emails can wait. The games on your phone can wait. The shows can wait. The next best thing can wait. Whatever else can wait. Relationships are important. Your health is important. Sleep is important. Your kids are important. Your spouse is important. Okay. Set yourself and your family up for success with some of those basic tips. I just gave you three simple things. Okay. And if you need help with any of those, like the meal planning and stuff, let me know. I have a recipe book that you guys can use. It literally has the shopping list in there. It has the recipes, the how to things are less than 30 minutes. Okay. I'm all about being simple these days right? And if you want more tips, 
because I never want to overwhelm you on these podcasts and lives that I do, head over to our Facebook group for more information on how to organize your life with these autoimmune diseases and chronic illnesses, these in-between moments, okay, that our doctor can't help us with, right? I didn't just create this community for fun. I created it with a purpose to make sure that we're all staying connected with each other because we are designed yes, so incredibly uniquely and we need the world the world needs the best you out there. And there's only way, one way they're going to see that best you is if you're in community with one another. Okay. So I'd love to see you in there. Um, Go check it out until next week. Keep on designing the best you.